Have you ever wondered why each time you make bread you get different results? I used to as well and I'm going to break down what's happening in this video. After watching this video, you should be able to get consistent results each time you make bread. Hi guys, my name is Susie and I recently started learning how to make my own bread. I ran into a few challenges recently and I almost gave up baking. But then I started reading more about the science of bread making and I decided to share what I've learned so far in a series called Knowledge Sharing. This video will have timestamps so you can skip to a section you're interested in. As a disclaimer, this is what I found from research and experimenting. If there's anything I see that you disagree with, leave a comment below and let's have a discussion. I'm hoping to learn from you guys as well. I'll have all of my references in the description box below. The reason why you get different results each time you make bread is because of two important factors, temperature and time. Temperature affects how slow or how quickly the bread dough rises, and this is more noticeable when seasons change. So the question you might have is, but how are professional bakers and bakeries able to get consistent results throughout the year? So this is where desired dough temperature comes into play. Desired dough temperature is the ideal temperature that your dough should be at after kneading. The desired dough temperature is actually a range between 75 and 78 degrees F. And this is the temperature range that is most conducive for yeast to get to work. If you're interested in learning how yeast works, check out my first video in this series and I'll link it up here. The desired dough temperature takes into account the temperature of the room, the temperature of the flour, and the heat generated by the kneading process, which is called friction factor, to determine the appropriate temperature of the liquid to use in your dough. This way you can adjust the temperature of the liquid throughout the year to ensure that you're getting consistent results each time you bake. During the kneading process, friction generates heat. When kneading by hand, you don't generate as much heat compared to a stand mixer or a food processor. So don't worry, I'm going to break down how to use the desired temperature, so go ahead and grab a notebook and follow along. The first step is determining how many factors you have. If using a basic recipe without a sponge or starter, the number of factors is 3. If the recipe calls for a sponge or a starter, then the number of factors is 4. Next, measure the temperature of the factors and record them. If you have an indoor thermometer, you can use that to measure the temperature of the room. And if you don't, don't worry about it, you can use the temperature of the flour. Next, stick your kitchen thermometer into the flour and measure the temperature of the flour. The next step is determining the friction factor. The friction factor for a stand mixer is 22 and 8 for kneading by hand. Next, pick a temperature in the desired temperature range. This is really your preference, you can pick one for now, but the more you bake will help you determine which one you should use. I usually use 78 during the colder seasons and 75 during the warmer seasons, but it really doesn't matter which one you pick, the goal is for your dough to be in the desired temperature range before you start proofing. I'm making a basic sandwich bread, so my number of factors is 3, so I'm going to multiply 76 by 3, which gives me 228 degrees. Next, subtract the temperature of the room and the temperature of the flour. I'm using my stand mixer for kneading, so I'll subtract 22. And here's the final results. All right, I hope you're still with me. Now we just need our liquid to be around 56.4 degrees. I recommend starting with liquid that is very cool and you can warm it up if needed. The temperature of my liquid was actually higher than I needed, so I put it in the freezer for a few minutes to cool it down. Next, combine the ingredients and knead the dough. The next video in this series is about kneading and I answer questions like how to know when to stop kneading. I'll link it up here for you. One last step. Before proofing the dough, measure the temperature of the dough to check if it's in the desired dough temperature range. If it is, go ahead and proof your dough. If the dough temperature is higher than the desired dough temperature range, the dough will rise a lot quicker, so you want to keep an eye on it 
so it doesn't overproof. Maybe proof it in a cool area. If the dough temperature is lower than the desired dough temperature range, then the dough will rise a lot slowly, so plan for a longer rise. Remember the second factor I mentioned earlier? Time. Another video in this series is about proofing your dough. How long you proof your dough will determine the texture and flavor of your final loaf of bread. So you definitely want to stick around for that one. If you found this video helpful, please thumbs up this video and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. Thank you guys so much for joining me in this baking journey and I can't wait to hear about what you guys are baking. If after watching this video you still have questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!